There were approximately 10,000 school districts in Missouri in 1901, second most in the nation at that time. Approximately 120 of those districts were in Jefferson County. The first consolidation law was passed in Missouri in 1901, beginning the process of reducing that number. The Missouri legislature passed the reorganization law of 1948, which further reduced the number of school districts in Missouri by 4,400 during the first five years it was in effect. A consolidated school district was defined as an enlarged district formed under the legislation enacted prior to 1948. A reorganized district was defined as an enlarged school district formed under the provisions of the reorganization law of 1948. Many of the citizens of Jefferson County attended small rural schools and some experienced the transition to the larger consolidated districts. Here are some of their stories. It was a white building and it was just one room. Uh, you went up the steps just like it is now and there was a uh, like what's it called we call it a cloak room that's where the water thing was where the water jug was and uh, the coat rack and where we put our, our lunches and the girls was on one side and the boys was on one side and then we went in and this big old stove was there and right behind the stove was a little small uh, closet where they had like extra books and um, then the windows was all on the the north side, and uh, the restrooms, if you want to call it, the outhouse was back there for for the girls and back here for the boys. Mm. And right out from the from the the school building was a woodshed because the the, uh, the had to have wood for the stove. It was just a one room building. It had a stove in the middle of the floor, and they had a tent made of metal around it so the uh, desks that was real close to it wouldn't get too hot. We did have desks, <laughs> and she kind of group the kids in groups, I think, according to age and that. A lot of things was taught just in general to the whole, whole uh, a group of kids. We had two rooms there, four, first four grades in one room and the other four grades in the other room and there was a, a hallway between. And this was a large hallway and that's where they served us lunch. They fill our plates and then we take them back to our rooms. Uh, over close to the uh, back was the uh, first grade and the second grade, third grade, fourth grade would be toward the front of the school. So, and we each almost had a row of each of us, so. To get to the old school you had to park your vehicle or whatever, a horse and buggy, whatever you were in, and uh, walk in, because it wasn't even a wagon trail in there. So if you went in, you had to go in on foot. Well, this school was very old, and the paint was scaling on it, and uh, it just looked like a desolate place, you know, not anything in to encourage you with education. It had a little vestibule and about three feet wide and maybe, uh, oh, maybe eight feet. And our overshoes and our books that we used for reference books, they were all out in this little ante room, I'd call it. And uh, uh, it was it was all we had. And we had a big stove. They always said it had a jacket around it and that was to keep us from getting burned or something, you know. And we always had a picture of George Washington on the wall, always. And uh, then usually we had a uh, double seated desk, you know, two set in, and uh, that was usually what we, how the inside was furnished, you know. It was all wooden building. At the time when we first started, there wasn't any basement, you know. And after a number of years, they put a basement under it, 
and then a cafeteria down there where they served dinner, you know, for the children, you know. This was a one-room school. Uh, it was not large. Um, the buildings was the woodshed and the two outhouses, and each one of them were two haulers. That, that, and they were very nice, actually, compared to some of the other schools that I had been to. And uh, every morning, uh, everybody went outside, if it wasn't pouring rain or snowing, uh, to raise the flag and do the Pledge of Allegiance. The bell was in a belfry on the top and had a rope coming down into what I called a vestibule at the school. It had the, the outside doors would open up and then this was maybe uh, an area that was five foot by ten foot long and it had glass doors that went into the school and in the middle of this is where the rope hung down. The library was right behind the furnace and uh, it stayed real warm in the library so kids would run back there and look for a book, probably just to get warm. When you have all eight classes in one room, it didn't matter which grade you was in, you was listening in on the other grades too because the teacher would teach one class to one grade and then she'd go to the next one. So uh, you got a little advanced information what you was going to have the next year and all that. When I got, was finished with my work to listen to what was going on over in another class. So I, that, I enjoyed that part. It kind of kept me occupied. So It was kind of distracting to be getting your lesson and had the teacher up there and the student up there in another grade going through their lesson, you know. It was kind of disruptive. And the older ones kind of helped with the younger ones too and reading and things like that. The first grade, you started up in front, and, you, and when you got to the very back end, you graduated. <laughs> you had a, uh, a thing of crayons with one layer. You didn't have a number, they didn't have double layers when I was in school. Uh, you had uh, a tablet that had the Indian's face on the front of it, just like they have now. And uh, you had uh, what they call penny pencils. They were penny piece and they had rubber on the top. And uh, they were good pencils, very good pencils. And we had a, a pencil sharpener that uh, you didn't, you, you only used it when it wore down to the, to the wood, you know. <laughs> five terms, whatever they call them, three months sections. Oh, it, it just, um, it just for grade school teaching. I got it on the strength of an examination instead of 60 hours because I didn't have 60 hours. I came back home and taught at Labarg School. If somebody was making some racket over here, I'd tap my desk and they knew who they were. And they'd look up and I'd look up and that was the end of it. But I didn't have any discipline problems. Mm -hmm. Not really. I don't call that discipline problem. Well, it doesn't sound too bad. All of my report cards had a little spot on there marked talks too much when I was in grade school. So I couldn't blame the kids when I was teaching with if they talked too much. <laughs> you, she well, she had a desk up in front and a chair and wanted to squeak back and forth, you know. <laughs> and. Uh, uh, she kind of kept one eye on everybody because if you talk too much, you know, you go stand over there in the corner, you know. And uh, you didn't like that too good. You felt kind of embarrassed about it. I remember that I started the first grade there and uh, my f friend lived up the creek from me. He went with me and the teacher whipped him the first day. And I went home <laughs> and my dad was president of the school board and I didn't go back until the next year. And so I, <laughs> I just got a little late start. But uh, I just couldn't believe that he whipped that boy on the first day. And he really didn't do anything. That I, I think the teacher just wanted to make an example of everything, to just show us what he was going to do if we were bad or something. But it, was, it scared me to death.
They taught six grades a year, but they taught first through eighth. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Um, you, if, if you started on it like an odd year, you had to skip grades down in the lower grades. And uh, they kind of grouped two classes together. You either took classes up or down if you were in the odd year. And it's hard to explain, but they called it skip grades is what they called it. Well, most of it was uh, arithmetic, spelling, history, and uh, little social science, but uh, most of it was just basic, and it wasn't no extra activity, it had a little art, and uh, that was about it. We studied rotation of crops, uh, terrace planting, uh, fertilization, uh, chickens, different breeds of chickens that, what do you want it for? Eggs, you want it for the pot, what do you want it for? And uh, beef, and horses, and pigs, and the, the different hay crops, which would be best for your situation there. But it was just all a, a vegetable garden, fruit trees, I mean, it's, it's all in there. We did a lot of poetry, and uh, our teacher, of course we had a very small library, and our teacher checked library books out from town, and there was, after lunch we always had, uh, she was reading a book to us, always. When we went to school at Mammoth, one year we had a special art teacher come in. She taught art, and she taught music, and so on like that. This was something they did at Hillsborough. They brought all the schools together for different things, like spelling or writing or art, just different things that they put all the schools together and they had, you know, like a contest between them. And we had spelling bees, the ciphering matches, yeah. Several times a year we had, we had uh, uh, before Christmas, we had a Christmas program with, with little skits, with plays, you know. Uh, once a month on, on Friday afternoon, we have uh, spelling bee or, and our uh, ciphering match. It's cipher, you know what ciphering is, that's f <laughs> mathematics. Well, we were notified that there would be this district-wide spelling contest, and we were provided with a list of words, and each student got a list. And we studied, and we studied, and we studied. This wasn't our spelling lesson. This was for the spelling contest. We entered two one-act play contests, and, and we had to go to different schools to put those on. And of course, people came from all over the district to, to see them. We had one, I don't remember what it was called. I was queen of the fairies anyway in that one. We, it was a fairy story and we all had beautiful costumes. Yeah, they had plays, you know, and everything. I can remember one, it's about uh, uh, Sleeping Beauty and Prince Charming, you know. We had co-ed teams, the girls and boys, and we'd go around and play the other little schools around. We'd go to Mayfield, and I remember that they had a girl, her name was Hulda, Hulda Bauer, she was the best ball player I ever saw. She, they beat us, and she usually was the one that beat us. There was a, it was a county baseball tournament, and we would go together with House Springs, and and uh, and have about one or two practices instead of our softball, to, uh, and send the team usually to Herculaneum. They had the better. Uh, base softball field at that time. Uh, the first week of school, my parents moved from the house there on the hill, as we called it, to a river bottom house that was on our same property. And uh, we could walk quite easily to school from there. It was mile, probably a mile and a half. Then if the river was up, we had to walk up over the hill, the bluff, right there by Big River Bridge, which wasn't a very fun. Or another way that would put us in the woods longer, 
I hated that. Daddy had blazed a trail, but I'd get lost every time. The first year I went to school, uh, the teacher set me on the pony. We, we had we rode a pony through the woods to go to school. Either our dad or our uncle, who lived with us, would drive us over, unless we had real bad weather. Then my dad had something that he could put in a wagon box. And they, we had mules, and he would hitch the mules up to the wagon and take us to school, and we would sit back in this, it was made of corrugated steel or something, and we would sit back in that and hunker down, and he had a curtain down in front of us, and he would drive us to school. And he had that wagon box fixed so that it could slide up and down if, it, if the creeks were up too high. See, we had to cross several creeks. And if the creeks were up too high, the wagon box could come up and float. And that happened a couple of times. And to this day, I am scared to death of water, and I never did learn to swim. Now, there was buses that came into Herculaneum because they gathered up children from as far away as Dittmer. But no, not in Herculaneum. We all walked. We walked. We walked the road when, it was, uh, when the weather was bad. And then um, there was one sh a shortcut uh, that we could take and come out. But it was three miles there and three miles home. We didn't think anything about it. Cold weather, snow. If it was too deep, we didn't go, of course, you know. You brought your lunch at the one-room school. And everybody, a lot of us shared lunch. Now, there was a lot of rural, I mean, most of the children had farms at that time. They were from farms. And I remember they, they brought their lunch in the little round tin bucket. And it, it mainly was jelly bread, sandwiches. And maybe they once a week they'd have a piece of cake or something like that or a piece of fruit. And we paid for our lunch. I think it was a dollar a week. And uh, we, you know, uh, they fill our plates, and then we take them back to our rooms. We take our lunch outside when the weather permitted, and we eat under a big tree, and uh, go back in when time is up. Um, I remember, you know, in the winter time, my mother uh, canned chicken and beef and things like that, and she would make uh, sandwiches out of that kind of thing to carry in our lunch, whatever we had at home. You would either take it with you or you went home for lunch. But as one thing that they did uh, serve with your lunch, they did bring milk to school, so we drank milk. I don't remember going to a cafeteria there, but we did have, they came around and did you want chocolate milk, white milk, or orange juice, and you paid so many pennies for that. The playground was a good size gravel. It was it was pretty a pretty good sized piece of gravel. Straight ahead was a dirt bluff, and that's where the boys played, knocking each other down and <laughs> rolling down it and jumping down it and doing all kinds of stuff. And uh, when my little brother was in the first grade, a boy pushed him off and he hit a big rock and broke his thigh. Back there, that was not a good thing. It was, a, it was an all summer long healing thing. It was terrible. Now, if you went around to the other side of the, the uh, house, you'd go down, and there's a grove of trees there, and there's a, there is a swing. There's a rope swing that some father put up. And there's a little wet weather branch there, and that's where the little girls played. It was all mossy down through there. And, of course, the moss was the carpet for their, for their house, you know. I don't remember any toys. I don't remember a ball or a bat. I don't remember any kind of toy. We were very imaginative, and we played all sorts of games. We would had a very nice swing set. Uh, there was like six swings. 
out by the big walnut tree in the front yard. We did play baseball, or not baseball, it was softball. Uh, there was enough kids that all the girls and all the boys had to play. We played Andy over. We threw, you know, threw the ball over the schoolhouse and ran like crazy. <laughs> I think it was when I was in the first grade. I remember, I don't know why I remember this, but it was a recess. And we were playing a game called Flying Dutchman or something like that. And the way the game went, if they hit your hand, you had to run around and get back to a spot or something. Drop the handkerchief and uh, Anthony over. you throwing the ball over the, over the building. And if they catch it, they come around and try to ca tag you. And that's just kind of fun. We had a swing set uh, that they had. Uh, the only piece of equipment that they had, or recreational equipment, they had three swings on it and two of those uh, uh, trapeze rings. And then we played mumble pig. Everybody carried a pocket knife. And so that's where you put the knife on your finger and flip it into the dirt. How do you pick a ball team when you got kids from seven years old up to th 13 or 14? You, you do it though. You wouldn't know about Mumbledy Peg, would you? Yes. Yes. Well, well that, that was in, in, in the spring season when the so when the ground was soft. <laughs> you 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 played games like this. Uh, marbles they didn't because they they that some they thought that was uh, game. If you played for keeps, well, that was gambling. Uh, so we didn't do too much of that uh, when the teacher was watching. family picnics and parents would come and, and play softball with the kids in school. And I can vaguely remember pie supper and uh, they would auction off pies and I think it was just to make money for the school to buy probably uh, supplies and wood and pay the bills. But I, I, that's the only thing I can remember them having in the school. They'd have that at night, and they'd, it was a kind of a fun thing, and you'd bake a pie and take it, and then they'd auction them, and whoever bought it, you eat your pie with. You kind of like somebody, you know, they know your pie, her box, you know, they bid it away up, and that, that was good, because it made money for the school, you know. And the girl that took the pie, she was real flattered that he had bid so much money on it, you know. We had a peanut stab. And this, everybody came to this too, and, and moms brought goodies and made cocoa and made uh, coffee. And you got a quart mason jar full of peanuts in the shell and an ice pick. And when they yelled go, you took a stab, and when you come out, whoever had the most peanuts on their ice pick <laughs> got a prize, which is usually a piece of hard candy. Before Douglas come there and they built in 1912, there was no school for the blacks. We couldn't go to the high school here. It hadn't integrated yet. We had to go to Festus Douglas okay. School down, Douglas oh, High good. School. Yeah. I graduated from there in 52. Uh, it was a, bu a shuttle bus that run from Festus to Herky. And we would ride the bus sometime. And then for a year or two, the high school furnished a bus to take us down there. It was like about six of us. They would take us down there and come and get us. And then they started to just paint us the bus fare, and we'd ride the bus, whatever bus we wanted to ride, or hitchhike or walk, whichever way you wanted to go. But they would give you the fare, I think, with like 40 cents a day. I guess, uh, the biggest thing that stand out for me was that uh, the kids that come from the other counties, 
uh, you know, like I said, uh, we only had like four miles to go from here, but kids come all the way from Arrington, Fredericktown, Farmington, which was 60, 70 miles, from St. Genevieve, 45 miles, from Potosi, 45 miles. Well, DeSoto wasn't too bad. They was only from 15 miles, but uh, the kids come rain or shine, snow didn't matter. They just didn't miss many days. And uh, all the kids was just glad to have somewhere to go because that was the honest school between St. Louis and Cape Dorado. It was uh, a block building and the rooms wasn't too big, but most of the classes was like 21 to 22 pupils per room. And they had upstairs and downstairs. And they had part of downstairs was the lunch room. And upstairs at the end, they had uh, home economic classes they taught there. So uh, then they had a music room. It always was uh, funded through Duncan School. We was just associate of Duncan, of Duncan School, so uh, all the taxes, the teacher's salary, the janitor's salary and all was paid by Duncan School because it was all in their budget. We played against all the black schools, which was in St. Louis and Illinois. Most of them was in our basketball. We, had, we was in the league in the teams from St. Louis, Sumner, Washington Tech, uh, Vashon, and East St. Louis, Lovejoy, and all of them. That's the schools we played against. You uh, always was taught by the grown-ups in the community to learn as much as you could. And uh, they pretty well harped on that pretty hard that they wanted you to learn as much as you could and uh, be as good as you could and uh, we never had any problems in school. Everybody was usually pretty good. We didn't have no uh, trouble with none of the kids. I came to Douglas in uh, the fall of 1952 and um, taught um, English and typewriting. And, but my first year, <clears throat> 52, 53, uh, I was just at Douglas. And then there was some discussion about the possibility of um, school integration and Mr. Tynes who was the superintendent uh, over at um, the, the Fester schools, well all of our schools actually, uh, was far-sighted enough to, to see this coming and so he started to prepare for it way back when. So the year of 53-54 I taught one class, I was still at Douglas School doing my duties there, but I taught one class over at Festus High School. And he had uh, approached me saying that um, they had a number of students who wanted to take typing and there were not enough opportunities, not enough classes, uh, teachers involved. So he would come and pick me up every day. I had a class, I taught a class over there from 11 to 12 every day. And I didn't have a car. This was in my young years and so on. But anyway, he would pick me up and take me over there. And uh, the children were very responsive. The children are different now from what they used to be, but they were very responsive. Uh, the teachers were very kind to me. Um, Mr. Tynes would bring me back uh, over to Douglas for my afternoon classes. Uh, sometimes the driver's training teacher would bring me back. Mr. Tynes was a superintendent, and he had had a discussion with everybody. Uh, his daughter has told me later that um, 
he had told them, uh, the, the whole student body, that this was happening, and he said, and it's going to work. We're going to see to that that it's going to work. And the mere fact that he brought me meant something, you know. It was not like here I am. But uh, anyway, that had a lot to do with it. But uh, the, the children themselves were, um, were kind. So uh, not only did the faculty, but the students had a chance to see what it might be like, you know, if we were at some point um, involved with each other. So that worked out very well. So that was uh, that one year. Then uh, the year of 54-55, um, I went to the high school full time, to Festus, to Festus High School. And um, that was the beginning. Well, actually, that was the beginning of, of integration in the um, Jefferson County Public Schools. But it worked very well. And I was just, um, just very pleased that everybody was so responsive. Parents, mm -hmm. teachers, students. Now, one thing, too, a lot of superintendents, you know, this kind of spread after a while. We were the first ones, but it kind of spread after a while. And a lot of superintendents around the state used him as a resource to, to help them figure out, how do we do this? And, uh, and I've, I've heard that from his daughter and from some other people later in the years that um, because it worked so well with him, not, not that we didn't have a few problems here and there, you know, you do that, that, that happens in, in, within the school, but the fact that it went as smoothly as it did and the fact that uh, you ha we had a chance to get prepared. Well, my feelings was I had a job to do. I knew my subject matter. My feeling was, will I be able to get your attention for you to learn? And I didn't have any problem with that since I was acting as uh, one of the football coaches after integration at the high, Festus High School. I had learned to respect for some of those students just because uh, I had played football myself and I felt that I knew it quite well. I asked some of the students, do you have anything small that you like at home that's broken that needs fixing. Bring it here. Let's see if you can fix it with the tools that we have here in the shop class. Maybe we can fix it or repaint it or get it fixed up again. But winning the students over like that, I'm here to help you do things better or get things done in the manual training section and also in physical education, I'm here to help you get uh, the best you can, uh, do the best you can in some of these different sports that you want to participate in. I, t I let them know that's my job. And I think I know right now, I tell them a little more about it than you do. So trust me. <laughs> In the fourth grade, um, they became a consolidated school district number nine. And um, the third and fourth, fifth and sixth graders went to Bear Creek School because they were consolidating. The first and second and seventh and eighth from Bear Creek came to House Springs. And that's when we got to move into a new school with inside restrooms and um, all the nice facilities of a, a new school. And this was consolidated uh, Bear Creek and House Springs. And I want to say before this, um, at that same time, there was a Heads Creek School that a few came from there and a few from several other little uh, schools in the surrounding areas. By fifth grade, fourth grade, fifth grade, we were reorganized school district number one, or I guess it would be Jefferson County reorganized school district number one. I get, we were the first one in Jefferson County to reorganize. They had a contest and said that the freshman students were to try and name the high school. And so I submitted the name Northwest because it was in the Northwest part of Jefferson County.
a couple of weeks later then they surprised me with a, a sweater. It got more recognition 25 years later or, or uh, yeah about 25 years later when my kids were in high school and then they wanted to know who named the high school you know and then and that got recognition in the newspaper and that stuff. And the first and second grade were in that building along with uh, the, f uh, the high school. We first met in the basement, three classrooms we had in the basement of the elementary school. That was all there was. And they had six rooms upstairs. And uh, I forget, I think it's the first, second, third, fourth grade met in the building upstairs. Well then, the second year, they still didn't have a building for us as a high school. And then we had juniors and freshmen, you know. And so then we took over three more classrooms upstairs, and so then they were busing more students out to Cedar Hill. And by that time, they already had um, a building, uh, which was a shop building for the high school, and students were going there then for that year. and. Uh, then first or junior year is when we had a high school building. In 1948, the district consolidated the five small schools in the Arnold area. And the people voted to go ahead with that because they could provide a larger school with more, uh, I should say, educational facilities than each school having their own. And it was a cost factor with each school. And as the schools got larger, they have to go someplace. And with the growth in northern Jefferson County, there had to be something to handle that. So they voted in 1948 to build and consolidate the district. It was assigned consolidated district number six. Because there were five schools in the Fox District which merged in 1950 to form the C6 district. Fox did not have a high school at the time. They were all going to Herculaneum High School. Herculaneum couldn't handle all of them, so Fox had to start a high school. My dad was the president of the school board of LaBarc, and he was adamant about his kids getting a good education. <clears throat> and he really pushed Eureka to take us in. And uh, there was a lot of, I didn't realize it at the time, but uh, just to take time out of your day to take kids to school and come back and and those were days when you had to work for long hours to make anything on a farm. My dad was a farmer and so this was time out of his productive day and uh, he did it for our education. We were crowded but they took it in stride and I think we had a good time. We educated a lot of our boys and girls and one of the things that I was very proud of is not only did we go, do good in science and sports, but one year we had six boys from Fox High School at West Point. The only school in the nation did have that. Junior high, when I was principal, we had no gymnasium because the senior high had the gymnasium. We only could go outside on warm days and have a gym class. We did start a basketball program for the seventh and eighth grade boys and girls. We had no gym court. We played on the blacktop with one basketball goal. And it was unusual for our boys and girls to go play another school who had two backboards in the same building. Well, we only had one. But we had good coaching and good kids, and we won the county championship for 7th and 8th grade junior high basketball. So you can do a lot without having everything you need. When I was in the second grade, uh, they consolidated with Eureka, and so my younger sister and brother went to Eureka, and it had quite a few more rooms in it. It had an upstairs in it, and it had a banister that you weren't supposed to slide, but everybody did. Um, and there were there was a separate room for each grade, which you know I went from having two buddies in my grade to having 30 kids or 20 kids. I don't know exactly how many were in, but you know, all these kids were my same age. So we had enough kids in, in school, we could have a ball game. 
rather than playing with the older kids. We had kids our own age that we played with. And I developed some great friendships there, too. From a, a social standpoint of intermingling with other kids, it was a benefit to go to the bigger school. Um, but I don't know, if you get too many kids, then it, it, it would lose its its advantage, because then you're lost in the crowd. Just the fact that there was a gym and and uh, bigger playgrounds and and more activities and a lot more kids, a lot more friends, because uh, they came, you know, from all over the area. I rode a school bus that picked me up. It, the bus started at Cedar Hill. And it picked me up, and I rode the bus 30 miles one way. And there was many a time some of the children would walk that far to the creek, and the creek was out of its banks or so swift they couldn't cross it to come to school, and they'd have to turn around and go back. Got on the school bus at 6 o'clock in the morning and got home basically at the same time at night. We had a lot of fun on the, fun on the school bus. One time we had a pillow fight with feather pillows. My uh, sophomore year, the man came in my life that I still love. Uh, he come out, and my parents lived at the end of the route. And of course, he needs some place to stay. So he stayed with my mother and daddy, and everybody said to me, well, how do you like the bus driver? I said, oh, I guess he's all right. And for too long, I decided he really was all right. So he drove the bus the rest of that year, and he was one of the first ones to be called from Jefferson County for the selective service. And uh, so he finished out the, the school year with the Hall of the Kids. And uh, he gave me a ring that was in February, I believe, that year, before he left to, to go to training. And uh, everything just happened from there. <laughs> well, I, I really liked it, because I was always really into sports, and we just had a lot more sports at Grandview. We had more things to do. They played, they had basketball and, and everything there. It was just, I enjoyed it. <laughs> well, I just was so glad that they, the people voted to build the, to consolidate and build a school that it really helped everybody I think as you had a better school more more teachers and more more classes and everything and uh, more sports and everything else I think everybody was and seemed like to me I, I can't remember hardly anybody that was against it I mean it, it, it when they voted for it it passed easily I taught two terms. The first was 47, 48, and then 48, 49. And at the end of that year, I quit to go back to finish my junior college work. And so the children were transported to Finister School. And so that was the end of that school. The first year, I had only 12 students. And the next year, let's see, we had there, the ones that were in the eighth grade had graduated, and so I had fewer than that. And then I went to Four Ridge School in the northern part of Jefferson County, and that was a different thing entirely. It just looked like a regular house, made of brick, and it had a full basement and so on. So there were some interesting things happened there, but. I haven't been thinking about that as much, but I was the last teacher there also. And uh, so I just went around over Jefferson County <laughs> closing the schools. <laughs> we went from the one-room rural school to the Antonia, large Antonia school district, because see, the, that district was made up of Four Ridge, Light, L-E-I-G-H-T, uh, Moss Hollow, and the little one-room Antonia. I imagine that they felt that they were going to get a bunch of little nincompoops in there 
<laughs> but I think they found out that we kids were as well educated as any of theirs were. Well, I signed a contract to teach with the Fox School District in 1955 while I was in the service. Came back, started teaching the ninth grade, the very first class that Fox had. So that class went all the way through their four years and graduated in 1959 from Fox High School, 58 graduates. But I can remember when my second year of teaching at Fox, I was to teach biology. We had no equipment. I went to the superintendent, Mr. Hemman, I said, we need some microscopes. We must do that. He asked me, what does a microscope cost? I said, about $150 each. There was no money in the budget for that. So I went to Sears Robot Company on South Grand, and I bought seven little miniature Japanese microscopes, $7 a piece. That was what I had for 32 students in biology. But we made it. At the end of my teaching career at Fox, I became a principal. And I moved up the line, and then I became principal of the Fox High School. As we grew, my first year, I was 1,200 students in the Fox High School, grades 9 through 12. So we grew, and we grew to 2,700 students at Fox. We had trailers. We had two shifts. We had three students in a locker. We had four lunch periods, but a good quality staff and parents who supported the school. But the irony is, I come from a 13-student school, one-room schoolhouse, and I become principal of this large school, 2,700. What a difference. In 1960, we had 550 boys and girls in the seventh and eighth grade at Fox. We were crowded. We used to have our lunchroom in the gymnasium at Fox Junior High Middle School. Now that gymnasium would have lunch in the middle of the day for our junior high and also our senior high. Well, as the schools get larger, the students don't get as many opportunities to take part in some activities. Uh, when you're in a small school, everybody is part of it. You might be a cheerleader and be on the football team at the same time. Who knows? And as I went to a big high school in the city of St. Louis, uh, there was just a varsity basketball team and a B team. And you had to be very good to be on those teams because we had 25, 2,600 students in the school. And that's the disadvantage you have. The, the advantage of a small school, the parents know everyone in that building. They take part. They might take the boys and girls on field trips. They're part of the, the school. They know the community. The disadvantage is they don't have all the other activities that you would like to have. For large-scale teaching, I guess the city system is the best, but I sure would not exchange my time in a one-room rural school for it, for anything. The Department of Education had several outcomes that they believed would be the result of school consolidation and reorganization in Missouri. Some of the results they saw were better educational achievement by students, a broader curriculum, special services, an increase in instruction time, overall per capita cost reduction, a longer school term, improved attendance, and better school buildings and equipment. Few people would disagree with these legislative outcomes. However, it was the parents, the teachers, and the students who truly made school consolidation work in Jefferson County.